The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, out of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly equipped unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. We have been saved by grace through faith that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. At this point, let us prepare ourselves as believers in Christ by using the principle of 1 John 1, 9, the rebound technique, if necessary. But if you are an unbeliever who are here, the issue you are facing is not confession of your sins, but by using your God-given free will and so you can make the most important decision in life, the decision to believe in Christ as Lord and Savior. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Therefore, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful to you for the privilege of having the freedom to assemble ourselves together once again in this Bible study through the YouTube so we can focus our attention upon your word, which is forever a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you that you have preserved your word in writing for it, both in the original languages as well as in translation. You have provided the activated human spirit for faith perception of doctrine. You have provided God the Holy Spirit, who is the ultimate teacher and the gift of pastor-teacher for communication of doctrine, so that every believer can consume the oxygen of the spiritual life, your word, and growth from infancy to adolescence, and from adolescence on to maturity, and fulfill the purpose for which you have left every believer in this life. And we know, Father, the greater knowledge of doctrine, the greater the growth, the greater the blessing, the greater impact, the greater production of divine good, the greater reward in the eternal state. And there is every benefit and no deterrent to growing in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so, as we approach the study of your word, we ask that you open our hearts to the truth that we may fulfill that divine mandate of spiritual growth. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Welcome everyone once again to our daily Bible study through the YouTube. We are still concentrating, 
focusing our attention on this doctrine, the great power experiment. Okay, we will continue where we stopped yesterday. We have said that a believer can only make use of God's power by learning this power. Study, learn, believe, and apply, and also operation PMA, perception, metabolization, and application, etc., and use this power to combat our enemy, our spiritual enemy. So we need discernment. We need it very badly in order that we may not be deceived by Satan, the arch enemy of God. Now, so let God, the Holy Spirit, metabolize the Bible doctrine that you study, learn, believe, and apply. Thus, God becomes real to your life. And this is how to experience the power of God. But always bear in mind, we have to keep on keeping on in our spiritual momentum. Every day, we study God's Word. This is the process of spiritual momentum. Also remember the doctrine of rebound, 1 John 1, 9. Rebound and keep moving. That makes us humble so we become teachable. You remember the principle, the rate of learning must exceed the rate of forgetting. All of these things that we're talking about are just the result of our spiritual momentum. Also remember that in the tactical victory we need the following. Filling of the Holy Spirit, spiritual momentum, application of God's ten problem-solving devices, enter the spiritual adulthood area, occupation with Christ, and renovate our mind with a post-salvation epistemological rehabilitation, etc. And get this, we cannot live the spiritual life in the human method. It can only be lived through spiritual method. Remember that the Christian way of life is a supernatural way of life, and as such, it requires a supernatural way of execution. Also remember the uh, uh, seven or six uh, requirements in the spiritual life. We have routine, organized life, true scale of values, making good decisions from your position of strength, perseverance and persistence. Now, when we are not doing the right thing in the right way, then we grieve and quench and quench God the Holy Spirit. So you can see here how critical things are. These are critical things. All of these things, remember, is grace. And grace as we know it is what we cannot deserve. We don't deserve, we don't work for, we don't earn it. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is the basis for the extension of the great power experiment for every church age believer. Acts 1.8 says, the Holy Spirit will come down to baptize us. The church age believer is an heir and the joint heir of our Lord Jesus Christ. But even if we are heirs, we have equal privileges and equal opportunities because we are heirs. Even then, we cannot receive this inheritance, escrow blessings in the eternal state if we fail to accomplish God's requirements for us to meet. To sum up, if we are negative, meaning no time, no interest, no study, learn, and believe, and apply, we can receive 
our inheritance. But of course, we will be in heaven with no escrow blessings. Why? Do you know why? Because we did not reach the capacity righteousness required in God's star standard. Do you understand that? So while we are still here in phase two, we are still in phase two life, okay? We have to redeem the time, fix our eyes on our goal, which is what? Spiritual maturity. We have to follow the rules in the protocol plan of God, like following the rules in any game. Do not allow yourself to be disqualified in the game plan. Remember the protocol plan of God, a right thing done in the right way. And don't forget the great power experiment of the Lord Jesus Christ hypostatic union and of the church age. The Lord Jesus Christ, before he ascended to heaven, promised the disciples that the Holy Spirit is going to come down to baptize them. Romans 8, 16 to 17, the Holy Spirit will testify that we are heirs as children of God. This means technon, the Greek word which means learned, guided by God. It's true, we believers are heirs of heaven, but we cannot receive our heirs if we don't meet its requirements. Now, our being heirs does not mean we automatically receive our inheritance, escrow blessings, without following the rules to be able to receive it in the eternal state. Remember, Old Testament plan of God is called ritual plan of God. But here in the New Testament, the plan of God is called protocol plan of God. Now, we already learned that the church age is a mystery age. The doctrines of this age are called mystery doctrines. In the Old Testament, believers followed the Mosaic law. Now, in the New Testament, believers follow the law of the Spirit, which is the royal law. You remember the three codexes, Codex 1? which is about the Ten Commandments, Codex 2, Spirituality, and Codex 3, Establishment. Now, the following did not exist in the Old Testament. Portfolio of invisible assets, God's ten problem-solving devices, grace apparatus for perception, rebound, faithless drill, and so on. It was not true, or it did not exist in the Old Testament. Remember, all believers, church age, are royal priests. All church age believers are indwelt by God the Holy Spirit. This is the indwelling ministry. Believers like Abraham, David, Jacob, etc. in the Old Testament were endued by the Holy Spirit. Once they sin, the Holy Spirit departs from them. That is endowment. Now, by the way, what is modus operandi? How to function in the protocol plan of God? That's modus operandi. But what about modus of vivendi? Well, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is what gives us the lifestyle. Modus vivendi is lifestyle. Now in Colossians 3.1, if you have been raised with Christ then, our lifestyle should be based on heaven, living life in the light of eternity. The great power experiment of the Lord Jesus Christ hypostatic union was the establishment of the church age. The great power experiment of the hypostatic union 
is the one that separates the age of Israel and the church age. What power that resurrected the Lord Jesus Christ? The same power is being left to us, church age believers. This power is from God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. God's plan is perfect. Only a perfect person can produce a perfect plan. Since God is perfect, His plan is perfect. God's plan doesn't change whether man accepts it or not. God's plan is protocol. Only inside the divine dinosphere that believers can execute God's protocol plan. Church age believers are members of the royal family of God. They are now aristocrats. They're supposed to know the royal family modus operandi and royal family modus vivendi lifestyle. The Christian way of life is a supernatural way of life. And as such, it requires a supernatural way of what? Execution. What God has decreed will never ever change. That proves how perfect His plan is. All that happens to man has already been programmed in the divine decrees. And no man can change God's plan. There is no place of human dynamics in God's perfect plan. The great power experiment was used by the humanity of our Lord Jesus Christ during His first advent. And the Lord Jesus Christ has left this great power experiment to all church age believers. No one, now listen, no one can execute God's protocol plan without this great power experiment through the filling of the Holy Spirit inside the operational divine dinosphere. The protocol plan of God emphasizes the utilization of divine power the Word of God. When we talk about great power experiment, it means the divine power. The protocol plan of God emphasizes aristocracy by storing up divine production. The full power of God is available right now. Hebrews 4.12, you know what it says, for the Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, Abraham, David, Moses, etc. were visible heroes. But in the church age, believers functioning in life with Bible doctrine are invisible heroes. Church age believers have to learn what protocol means by studying Bible doctrine, by learning the plan of God, how to reach spiritual maturity and become invisible heroes. This is the only way to glorify God. Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. So, how does a believer glorify God? Well, the answer is by fulfilling the protocol plan of God inside the divine dinosphere, executing the spiritual life and reach spiritual maturity, the pleroma stage, the capacity stage. There should be balance of residency, meaning Bible doctrine and filling of the Holy Spirit. So a believer has to study, learn, believe and apply Bible doctrine. The protocol plan of God is described as a right thing done in the right way. A believer who performs and functions God's plan through his energy of the flesh is doing the right thing in a wrong way. Did you understand that? Only a right thing done in the right way is God's perfect 
protocol plan. When the right thing is done in the wrong way, that means the end does not justify the means. For example, you have a grandmother who is rich and you want to avail of her money as soon as possible, although you already know you are the heir. But in order to make use of the money soonest, you have a bad idea. And what is that? The end does not justify the means. Do you know what I mean? Inside the protocol plan of God, by the way, is where the filling of the Holy Spirit is. And what you produce is only divine good, gold, silver, precious stones. 1 Corinthians 3.12 You see, the humanity of Christ utilized the prototype divine atmosphere. Thus, he was a winner. Now, we are mandated to reside and function inside the operational divine dinosphere. The Lord Jesus Christ's great power experiment during his first advent was successful and was proven. You see, God respects our volitions decision. We are the only one responsible, answerable, and accountable for any decision we make. So we cannot deny, we cannot justify our wrongdoing. You know, God is perfectly fair. He perfectly blesses a believer who is spiritually mature. And He spanks a believer who is carnal and reversionistic. So He is perfectly fair. We are subject to decide in life. Besides, all of life is decision-making, right? Rebound, talking about rebound, it is a very, very important doctrine for every believer. Without it, he cannot grow spiritually. Always remember, a right thing done in the right way is right. Now, this great power experiment can be used by every church age believer in his spiritual life in his Eusebia, meaning godliness. We believers should know the protocol as mandated by God, how to live his protocol plan. How? By taking in doctrine on a daily basis. Remember, a right thing done in a wrong way is what? Wrong. Only a right thing done in the right way is God's protocol plan. The right way is compatible with God's perfect plan. The right thing is done in the right way only when we are inside the operational divine dinosphere utilizing the divine power. God's protocol must be followed in order for us to function in our spiritual life. Without rebound, we will not be able to advance and progress in our spiritual life. But if we make rebound second nature to us, we can now utilize God's spiritual assets and continue putting ourselves under God's grace provisions. Persistent Residence in the divine atmosphere results to occupation with Christ. So we have to renovate our mind with the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16 We must have the right priorities in our spiritual life through following God's protocol. We cannot follow God's will without using His protocol and residing inside the operational divine atmosphere. Now let me ask, what is virtue? You know what it is? Virtue is the result of a believer's persistent and consistent residence inside the operational divine atmosphere. 
by prioritizing the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word, a believer is able to acquire the divine virtue, not human virtue. You see, human virtue is morality. A believer has to have divine virtue above and beyond human virtue. Morality is not adequate for a believer. It is divine virtue that a believer must acquire. Cosmic believers are people who don't know God's protocol. They are the enemy of the cross. Enemy of God, as James 4.4 4 says. And they are antichrist against the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John 2.18 2 John 7, there are people who do not acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. And they are carnal, Romans 8, 7. They are disciples of the devil, 1 John 3, 8 and 10. They are grieving God, the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 4, 30. And they are quenching the Holy Spirit, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. Only studying and applying the Word of God that a believer avoids to be described as of the above list. Furthermore, only residing in the operational divine atmosphere that a believer is able to please and glorify God. The right precedence in terms of relationship. First, right relationship to God. Divine power must have the first priority. Second, right relationship to man. The plan of God is called protocol because the Christian way of life is by protocol, God's perfect design. The Christian way of life cannot be executed through human protocol, but through God's protocol. Remember, the great power experiment is made available by God right now. To be a Christian is not a joke. It, being a Christian, bears a tremendous responsibility. A Christian is called elected and or predestined. When it comes to prayer, we should not say, why is it that I have not been given by God what I ask from Him when it says whatever you ask and in my name it shall be given thee why <laughs> may I ask you did you follow God's protocol plan did you follow God's protocol when it comes to the doctrine of prayer because there is protocol to follow so you can receive whatever you ask in His name that's why you have not received the thing that you have been asking from him. Remember, prayer is not a problem-solving device. So many believers have no clue on the protocol of God about prayer. Now get this, the great power experiment comes from the Godhead. From God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Just imagine that privilege. Bear in mind that you've been born again at the point of salvation and you became a recipient of 40 things. God's power. It's all inside the pro or portfolio of invisible assets. We will continue. Uh, taking this up tomorrow. So right now, let us pray. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, let us spend the closing moments of our Bible study today describing salvation. Describing that which the unbeliever does not have or is not aware of. It's time if you are an unbeliever this morning or this afternoon, what time you have there that you be aware of what Jesus Christ offers to you. He offers eternal life. God so loved the world that He gave His only uniquely born Son, 
that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now everybody wants eternal life. So if you want it for real, if you want the eternal life that God promises, you must understand how Christ brings it to you. First of all, he appeared as God and man. That is who Jesus Christ is. And then he came for one single purpose, and that was to die for you. To die for your sins. That was, uh, that means he was your substitute. The sins that rightfully God should judge that are yours, he, ju he was judged. He himself was judged for your sins. So now your sins are not a block anymore. They are not an issue when it comes to your relationship with God. Christ took care of that. And so because he did, there is a simple way to receive eternal life. Because of Christ, all you have to do is accept his work, accept his person. Because Christ did it all for you. I pray that you give this great consideration because it is your life. And you must know what you are headed for. Eternal condemnation or eternal life. The choice is all yours. Therefore, let us pray. Father, we thank you for that so great salvation. We thank you for sending to us your only begotten Son and for becoming our substitute in paying for our sins. And now as your children, we pray that you will guide us in our Christian life that we may be able to attain our spiritual goal, which is spiritual maturity, the capacity stage. Thus, glorifying you to the maximum. You who deserves all the honor, all the respect, all the love, all the adoration, all the worship, all the praises. All these we ask in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs>